Hey guys, uh, what's up? I'm really tired, so I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Uh, whether that's a good or a bad thing, you'll have to tell me. All this is going to be is going to be a preview, or my preview slash prediction slash thoughts for uh, tomorrow night slash really today's um, Destination X, the all X Division pay-per-view uh, that uh, TNA is doing uh, this Sunday or today, depending on if you're still up or not. Yeah, ramble when I'm tired. Get over it. Um, Alright, first of all, I'm going to say congrats to TNA for realizing where your bread and butter is and giving the X Division a chance to shine again. I hope it's the first of many opportunities. I don't hold that hope very high because Hogan and Bischoff are still there and they're going to push the main eventers from you know 30 years ago till they all croak. But it's awesome for one, even if it's just for one night. You think back to, um, uh, I feel bad in a way because I wasn't a fan of TNAs right from the beginning. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna say that I was with them from day one because I really, really wasn't. So going into this particular pay per view, I feel very much like I did when, uh, when WWE did the first one night stand, and it was a shout out to all the old ECW guys. I mean, obviously, there were the ones that I knew, like the Dudley Boys and Spike and Rhino and Raven and Steven Richards and all those kind of guys. But there was a lot of them that I had known by name, but never had, there was no context for me because I wasn't around during the ECW heyday. And, you know, then TNA tried to do it and we got hardcore justice and we know what a joke that was. But, um, in the original, um, as I say again, heyday of uh, TNA when it was first getting started and the X Division was the most prominent thing they had. I hadn't quite caught on just yet, so some of these matches um, don't have as much meaning for me as I know that they do for other people and that I know they do for the company. So I kind of feel bad on that level because I'm not going to enjoy it on the same level as some of you might. Um, but that being said, um, on the other side of that coin, um, a lot of you saw me do a video a little while ago that was uh, my response to uh, Joe Shy Guy's thoughts on um, on oh what the hell Sin Cara. There we go. I'm really sorry, guys. I warned you in advance that I am tired. This is how this video is going to be, probably. In that video about Joe Shy Guy's thoughts on uh, on Sin Cara, I made reference to uh, old WCW cruiserweight matches, old uh, WWE cruiserweight matches, and how I really didn't much give a crap about storylines, I didn't give a crap about who was face or heel, I didn't even really care who won, I just wanted to watch really, really awesome, high-flying, spectacular matches. Um, it's really kind of how I feel about, um, about this show. Um, I don't, uh, I'm probably not explaining this very well, but I really don't, making a prediction vid or uh, what I would like to see happen... Uh, vid for this particular show is difficult for me because I don't I mean obviously I'm going to keep being a wrestling fan I'm going to care what happens but as far as watching the show itself I don't really care who wins and loses for the most part because most of the matches on their merits alone are going to be good regardless of how the ending is booked and this and that and da 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 da, da. so I am going to put in my previews I am going to put in my two cents um but it's not with as much oomph and as much vigor as I would for most shows, which I pay more attention to the booking and more attention to the bullshit and all that. Now, the last thing I'm going to say before I um, before I get on to my actual predictions, um, I mentioned the old ECW throwback shows like the One Night Stand, Hardcore Justice, and what all that. And what both of those had in common was it was devoted to the ECW guys. But everybody else around them that hated them, that, you know, um, when they did the first One Night Stand, there was a big contingent of, like, protesters, if you want to call it that, you know, led by JBL and a bunch of other jack wagons that nobody really cared about that interrupted the show. It ended up with a big shoot war between Paul Heyman and, and JBL, because you don't know who's going to win that one. Um, and the resistance that the ECW or EV2 guys got in TNA was fucking ridiculous. So I have this twinging fear in the back of my head that a whole lot of non-ECW guys are going to invade or disrupt or 
try to stop the show tomorrow night, you know, led by Hogan, led by all the idiots like Bubba Ray Dudley and and Scott Steiner and stupid people like that that have had issues with the X-Division before. If TNA can avoid that stupid mistake, that alone will be enough to bump this show like five points if I had a rating system at all, which I don't. But um, anyways, I have rambled on long enough. Here are the matches and here are my thoughts. The winner gets a contract uh, match. I love that they did this, first of all, and it paid equal attention to guys that we've never seen before and guys that we have seen and want back. So we have a fatal four-way match between Zima Ion, who's new, Jack Evans, who's new, Loki, who I saw before in TNA, and in his brief stint where, you know, WWE was stupid and didn't really know what to do with him, and Austin Aries, who's apparently a big name, who I'm unfortunately not interested in. Um, my thoughts on this. Um, there's two guys that we've never heard of before, and two guys that are, you know, well-known names, even though I don't know one of them. Um, all four of them, in their preliminary matches on Impact, impress the hell out of me. I'm a mark for high flyers. It's not that hard to impress me in a high in a high flying X division cruiserweight type match, but give all these guys their due. I mean, there was four qualifying matches, which were all triple threat matches. So there was 12 guys, you know, throwing themselves around the ring like rag dolls for a chance chance at uh, that TNA contract. Um, so to be fair, I'm gonna pick one old guy and one new guy. Uh, Jack Evans was the last one to qualify. He did some fantastic somersault. Um, bullshit that I uh, that I couldn't even have predicted and even looking at it after I tape Impact every week when I watch it just in case I miss something or whatever and I'm going through and it's like did I just see that I went go watch it again did I just see that like if somebody that I don't even know can make me do that somebody that I'm not yet invested in can make me do that that holds a lot of weight with me uh, out of the two guys that are well known I'm gonna let my bias take over I'm gonna go for Loki if nothing else, then the fact that he got royally pooched at uh, his one run in WWE, he won NXT, lost a couple matches, and then they got rid of him. So yeah, I'm either going to go for Jack Evans or Loki, with all due respect and earned respect to Xena Ion and uh, Austin Aries. Moving on. Uh, I don't like it when they do this, but Doug Williams versus a mystery opponent. Um, when Doug Williams a little while ago started his thing where he was going to, he was kind of going against the X Division, but he was kind of showing what he could do within the X Division, even though he was against it. I kind of liked it because you had this melding of styles between the mat-based, ground-based grappling, wrestling, and the unpredictable uh, X Division type stuff. Um, it was good for a little while. He had a little spiel with AJ Styles, which I was quite into. And then they pulled him out of it, and then they had him in Immortal, they had him in Fortune, they had him in this place, that place, and then he kind of fell off the planet. And now they're trying to put the British Invasion back together, which I can't really get into the second time around, because Magnus is still trying to be his, you know, sort of pretty boy character, which I don't get. So, I hope they bring in somebody big for this, like... I don't know what his status is at all, but wouldn't it be awesome if they brought out somebody older like, you know, Psychosis or Billy Kidman or somebody like that? Either that or, like the match before, introduce somebody that we've never heard of. Don't just pick somebody random from the back and be like, hey, I'm going to go have a match with Doug Williams because I've got nothing else to do tonight. Um, you know, honestly, can't predict the match because I don't know who the opponent is. Next, X Division title match Kendrick versus Abyss. Abyss is the only non. X Division guy that I really find acceptable on this pay-per-view only because he's got the X Division belt, which in itself is retarded. I'd love to say that Kendrick is going to win this, but I can see Abyss holding on to the title belt to piss us off up until Bound for Glory, until we finally get a payoff and somebody gets the belt off of Bound for Glory, because other than this show, which I've really been looking forward to, they're really building everything else up to Bound for Glory like in a couple months. Um, I guess they're proving that they can do a long-term set of stories, uh, rather than, you know, week to week, uh, what are we going to do this week? Uh, let's do this. So they're proving that they can hold some consistency and hold long-term storylines. Side note, the Bound for Glory series idea is fucking tremendous, as far as I'm concerned. Um, assigning different values to a pin, a submission, a count or disqualification. Making the house shows and what happens at the house shows matter 
for once. I don't think that's ever happened before. I think that's fucking amazing. Anyways, getting back to my initial point, I don't see Abyss dropping the belt. This being the X Division pay-per-view, I can see him holding on to the belt just to piss us off, to keep us interested in who's going to take the belt off of him up until Bound for Glory, and whoever gets the title off him at Bound for Glory, that will be our big payoff. I could be wrong. I like Kendrick. I would love it if he got the belt tomorrow night, but I don't see it happening. I'm sorry. RVD versus Jerry Lynn. Um, kind of like Austin Aries, I don't really have an opinion on Jerry Lynn because I don't know much about him. Apparently, uh, in the early days in ECW, etc., 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 these two had a huge rivalry that took over for a while, and everybody was super, super into it. I don't know. I'm not familiar, so I can't comment on that, so we got one guy that I don't really know, and one guy in RVD that, although I love him in the ring, he's really losing a lot of his luster. Um, so again, it's purely my bias and my recognition that's going to sway my prediction here. I'll, I'll say that RVD is going to win, but I really, really don't know. Um, Ultimate X, number one contenders match for the um, TNA X Division Championship. Alex Shelley, Shannon Moore, Amazing Red, and Robbie E., let me tell you about these four guys, in my opinion. Robbie E. can fall off the face of the earth. Robbie E. needs to be jerking the curtain on some indie promotion. Robbie E. holds no TV value for me. Holds, I don't like him in the ring. I don't like him on the mic. I think his character is fucking stupid. I don't like Jersey Shore. I would rather see Zack Ryder in this match than Robbie E. How about that? So that's him. Alex Shelley, definitely. If he wasn't part of a tag team... I would say, for definite, have him win the match. For sure. But Motor City Machine Guns are one of the strongest tag teams in TNA, in wrestling, right now. So if they put the title on Alex Shelley, I'll be okay with it, but it won't make much sense in the long run in a company that has an okay tag team division, but not very many tag teams, if that makes sense at all. Um... My personal bias, I've always been a fan of Shannon Moore. I would love to see Shannon Moore win this. I would love to see Shannon Moore go on and become the exhibition champion. But, um, realistically, I see this going to Amazing Red. Amazing Red, solid in the ring, uh, a little bit more generically pleasing. Shannon Moore is sort of like for the alternate fans, like the fans of the Hardys, the fans of, you know, Matt and Jeff Hardy, the fans of, uh, of uh, RVD and Raven and people like that are, are going to go for Shannon Moore. The more mainstreamly pleasing uh, wrestler, not that he doesn't deserve it, is Amazing Red. So as much as I would love to see Shannon Moore win this, my prediction is Amazing Red to go on. And uh, if Amazing Red goes up against uh, Abyss, and he's the one to actually take the title off Abyss uh, at Bound for Glory, if Kendrick doesn't win tonight, Take, Amazing Red taking the title off Abyss at Bound for Glory would be key, wouldn't it? Samoa Joe versus Kazarian. Now we're getting into, like, the uh, the pioneers, you know, other than Jerry Lynn, the uh, the real pioneers of the X Division. Um, purely on size, I see this match um, depicting a speed advantage for Kazarian, even though Joe is a pretty fast guy for his size. I don't see Joe winning this, because right now his character is basically based on him being a pissed off, frustrated guy and that only works if he's losing and has something to bitch about if he's winning he doesn't have very much to bitch about, does he? Um, add to that the fact that friggin Kazarian is phenomenal um, I, I draw a lot, people don't like it but I draw a lot of parallels between Kazarian and John Morrison, and John Morrison we all know, if he wasn't pissing off the wrong people, John Morrison would have at least a second rate title by now so, um, plus Kaz is part of Fortune, which they're pushing to the moon, so I'm pretty sure Kaz will be the winner. The, uh, the main event, or what I'm assuming is going to be the main event, Styles and Daniels. Like I say, I haven't watched from the beginning, I haven't, I wasn't there for their original rivalry that they had, like the Styles-Daniels rivalry, the Styles-Daniels-Joe rivalry. I've seen clips, I've seen flashbacks, but it's just not the same as being around at the time. You know, if you watch clips of Austin and Shawn Michaels fighting. It's not the same as if you sat down at your TV at WrestleMania that night and saw Austin beat Michaels for the title. Uh, it's the same for me with these guys. Like, these guys are amazing, or they are phenomenal, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, I really, really, really 
am beyond caring who wins this match. I might lean a bit to Daniels only because you know the push is going to be behind Styles. Styles has done more. In the time I, I roughly started watching TNA as these two went from being rivals to being a tag team. And as a tag team, they were amazing. And then they split off, and then Daniels has been in and out and whatever, and AJ Styles went right to the moon. Um, so, in the long run, Styles really doesn't need the win, does he? So, I will lean towards Daniels, because I kind of like to vote for the underdog sometimes. Plus, I do really... I think he's underrated in the ring, whereas Styles... Styles gets the recognition. I think Daniels is just as good and is not as recognized. So, the purely because of a sympathy vote, I'm going to swing for Daniels on this one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be wrong. Anyways, that's the card as I know it, as I see it. If I've missed a match, I'm really sorry. I'm uh, sure you guys are done hearing me ramble and be tired. So, I'm going to cut this short. I've been Spaz. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. I will see you tomorrow night after the show. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.